In 2005, there was an article in Forbes um, uh, about Kurt Vonnegut in which he actually said something really interesting. Uh, he said that he, he believes his stories and his movies force people to respond emotionally. And, what he actually, and he actually said this, in contrast, the arts require no risk from people. He specifically cited Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper as static and devoid of emotion. Oh, Ouch. Wow. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. that, that's, uh, that's drawing a line in the right. sand, I think. You know, as we move on to Art Talk 61 featuring Leonardo da Vinci, think about what, what Vonnegut said. Let's ask our town hall audience, do you feel any emotion, emotional response, feelings of risk, or sense of controversy from Liam Prezor? With that said, let's welcome Sarah with our talk number 60, Leonardo da Vinci. Hey, welcome, Sarah. Hi, everyone. Hello, Sarah. Hi. Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. I do hear some, uh, some nice classical music in the background. Can everyone still hear me? We well? sure can. We sure. Yep. Okay, great. Let me share my screen. We'll fade the music out. Okay, perfect. I love I love that that the transition music. It's it's <laughs> lovely. All righty. So Leonardo di Ser Piero da Vinci, uh, described as one of the most gifted and inventive men in history, uh, was known as a polymath, which essentially is just a person who's a genius in many different subjects. He was active as a painter, engineer, scientist theorist, sculptor, and architect. And while his fame initially uh, rested on his achievements as a painter, he also became known for his notebooks, which he made drawings and notes on a variety of subjects, including anatomy, astronomy, botany, cartography, and paleontology. So really many different subjects he was interested in. Uh, he was born in 1452 in a village near the town of Vinci, Tuscany, and was raised by his paternal grandfather. Um, he was educated in Florence by a renowned Italian <laughs> painter and sculptor, and he began his career in Florence, but also spent much of his time in Milan and Rome as well. In 1472, after six years of apprenticeship, Leonardo became a member of the Guild of St. Luke, which was a Florentine group of artists and medical doctors, which I think is kind of funny because nowadays, we think of art and science as opposite ends of the culture spectrum. Uh, but in the Renaissance, they were both seen as very innovative. So Vitruvian Man, I'm sure many of you find this piece very familiar, depicts a man in two superimposed positions. In one position, the man's legs are together with arms outstretched to show the volume of a square. And in the second position, the man's legs stand apart and his arms extend to demonstrate the circumference of a circle. And the shading and delicate drawing of elements such as the hair, for example, give this drawing kind of a three-dimensional graphic feel. And Leonardo also describes his intention to study the proportions of man as described by the first century uh, BC Roman architect Vitruvius for whom the drawing was named. Um, and ultimately the Vitruvian man is really a mathematical study of the human body highlighting the nature of balance between proportion and symmetry. And again, we can see the confluence of science and art, math and art. So the Mona Lisa, again, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this one. It's also known as La Gioconda, La Gioconda, excuse me, my Italian pronunciation is not quite up to snuff, uh, but it is said to be a portrait of Lisa Gerardini, who was the wife of a Florentine merchant named Francesco del Gioconda. And this innovative half-length portrayal shows the woman seated on a chair with one arm resting on the chair and one hand resting on her arm. And this work is one of Leonardo's most iconic for multiple reasons. Uh, prior portraits of the time focused on presenting the outward appearance of the sitter and the personality of the subject um, was only really hinted through maybe symbolic objects, clothing or gestures or things like that. But in this painting, da Vinci's desire was to capture more than just her likeness. He wanted to show something of her soul, um, which he accomplished with his great emphasis on her kind of peculiarly unconventional smile. And she's not simply just smiling for the artist. She's kind of caught in this particular moment of feeling and the viewer is left to wonder what she's thinking and what the smile might have meant and who she was. 
Um, and I was actually able to see this piece in person years ago at the Louvre, and it's surprisingly much smaller in person than, than one would expect. And then on the right, we have Ginevra de Benci, which is a portrait painting of uh, the 15th century Florentine aristocrat, Ginevra de Benci. And it's actually a juniper bush that sh surrounds her head and fills much of the background. <laughs> And um, this serves more than just decorative purposes. Um, in Renaissance Italy, the juniper was regarded as a symbol of female virtue, while the Italian word for juniper, ginepro, uh, also kind of makes a play on Ginevra's name. And this piece was likely a commemoration of her recent engagement. Hmm. Another very famous piece, um, the Duke of Milan actually commissioned the Last Supper for the refectory uh, of the Covenant of Santa Maria della Grazie. And it reflects the famous story of the last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples before his crucifixion. And more specifically, it's the moment after he has told them that one of them would betray him. Uh, Jesus sits central, reaching for bread and a glass of wine, which refers to the Eucharist. And behind him through the window displays this kind of idealized landscape, perhaps alluding to heavenly paradise. And uh, the three windows may denote the Holy Trinity as well. So what's interesting is because water, the water-based paints that were typically used for frescoes of this type, they weren't conducive to da Vinci's signature technique, which was called sfumato, which created this kind of smoky glaze. So because these types of paints weren't conducive for his technique, he opted for oil-based paints for this work. Uh, but unfortunately, the oil on plaster combination would prove disastrous. And even before the artist's death, the paint already began to flake from the wall. So this masterpiece has been consistently restored over the centuries, uh, the last effort lasting 21 years before completion in 1999, and very little <coughs> of the original paint remains. So here are two versions of Virgin of the Rocks, and both paintings show Mary and child Jesus with the infant John the Baptist and an angel Uriel in a rocky setting, which gives the paintings their name. And the significant compositional differences are mainly in the gaze and the right hand of the angel. Um, and there are many minor ways in which the works differ, including, you know, the colors, obviously, the lighting, the flora, the way in which the sfumato has been used. Um, and the version generally considered the prime version or the main version is the earlier of the two. It's unrestored and hangs in the Louvre in Paris. And the other, which was restored between 2008 and 2010, hangs in the National Gallery in London. Annunciation depicts the angel Gabriel announcing to Mary that she would conceive miraculously and give birth to a son to be named Jesus and called son of God. Uh, this piece is housed in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence and Leonardo might have finished Annunciation in his early 20s, um, which was while he was still in his apprenticeship, making this one of the earliest completed works of da Vinci that we know of. So as I mentioned before, uh, da Vinci was really interested in anatomy, not only in the Vitruvian man, but with all things. So here you can see some sketches he did of weapons, different types of weapons. And here we can see some studies and sketches of different whirlpools and waves. And again, this was very much part of the Renaissance to be interested in how things work and learn why certain things happen in nature to qu start questioning what and why and how. So this is one of da Vinci's more abstract pieces, um, similar kind of looking to the previous sketches I just showed. So this represents, Deluge represents a wooded area that has exploded after a huge flood. So you can kind of see representations of water, of trees, of stone falling from the sky. And uh, this was later in his life when he took more of an interest in drawing these cataclysmic events. So the Mona Lisa is considered Leonardo's magnum opus and is often regarded as the most famous portrait ever made. We have the Last Supper, which is the most reproduced religious painting of all time. And then Vitruvian Man, 
um, which is just considered a cultural icon in general. I mean, that's, that's quite a legacy. And even still, uh, Leonardo da Vinci's artistic works and personal life continue to be of interest with the general public. Thank you. Hey, fantastic, Sarah. Thank you. So, uh, Sarah, can you hang around with us for, for a little bit? Sure. So I, we like to do a poll on Zoom to answer yes if you're emotionally moved by Leonardo's work or just answer no if you weren't. I'd be really curious to see what yeah, our audience I think, thinks. I think it would be, definitely. Yeah. Sarah, what was your favorite piece? I really like the Virgin of the Rocks. There's something, I don't know, very mystical uh -huh. about it. And I, I, I just like the setting as well. Yeah. Did you notice that uh, they're uh, done eight years apart and it looked like in the latter one, uh, the, the, um, the babies actually grew a little bit older. <laughs> you wanna go back to that slide? Sure, sure. He grew with he grew with the times. Yeah, yeah I think so. I mean, it's back to exciting. I mean, I, did, I don't know. Am I the only one that to to like, uh, that's see a that? great catch? Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I actually didn't yeah. notice that. Right yeah. there. If you look at yeah, the left and the right, 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 like right the, here, the babies all, have, have aged a little yeah. bit. Yeah. He's a little bigger. Yeah, exactly. That's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. That is it. Yeah, Jacques. What was your favorite piece? You know, I I really like the Last Supper, <laughs> predominantly because there's been so much controversy about it and so much. Yeah. It's been studied so heavily. Um, you know, I mean, the Da Vinci, you know, writ large is a very creative, you know, soul uh -huh. and, and the, the, what he brought to his, you know, insights. I mean, many of the, you know, honestly, if, if you wanted to do tech today, you could just use his notebooks as your playbook. And, <laughs> and you know, he, de he defined so many things that we take for granted today. 